other side of YouTube that brings you the most heat, welcome to Popsicle. Now today, we're gonna be talking about a theory. Like I, I was talking about it before in my last video that I wanted to talk about um, pretty much my fantasy booking of the new Wyatt family. And um, I wanted to wait, I did that about a week ago. I was I was actually planning to do it like within the next couple of days, within like maybe the next day or the, um, you know, the day after that. But I wanted to wait for SmackDown to see what would happen with Daniel Bryan. You know how uh, the Fiend promised a new face, dragged Daniel Bryan under the um, under the ring, pulled out lots of hair. So I was expecting to see maybe a new puppet or at least Daniel Bryan in some capacity on SmackDown, but that didn't happen. So um, and it's actually a good thing because it keeps this uh, it keeps this theory fresh at least until the next SmackDown. Where we'll see what maybe what happens. Um, I don't think we're gonna see Daniel Bryan for a while, but I just wanted to wait. Now moving on. Um, this theory actually contained Luke Harper, but since he's been released, uh, I had to rework it a little bit and tweak it. So that, that's another reason why this video was a little delayed. So um, I'm gonna try to upload as much as possible from now on on this channel. Um, and try to you know pump out more content, but uh. Um, excuse me being shirtless. It's pretty hot. So Yeah, I didn't want to sweat on camera. So I took my shirt off But yeah, as I was pretty much saying in the last video I gave you guys a little slight rundown of it, how I would do it But um, I wanted to uh, really go into a little more depth and, and tweak the things that I that I said for for things to make more sense so um, here we go with the theory so we know that pretty much the uh, the fiend, or at least Bray Wyatt, he he mentioned family at least twice. Um, you know, with his uh, with his promo before, he was he he stuttered in saying in saying the word family, um, which really shows his character work. It's showing that like he 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 at least acknowledges the past. Um, so I really wanted to go into the uh, the new family theory, and um, like I said in the theory before, he can make every single superstar in the new family pretty much embody one of the puppets, uh, each, each one of the puppets in the Firefly Funhouse. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to go into exactly what superstar would fit what puppet and exactly what purpose they would serve and their characteristics. So here we go with that. The first one, as you guys already know, as the internet has already gone on about is Liv Morgan. We talked about her in the last video. Liv Morgan, um, you already know the only, the only female puppet uh, Abby the Witch, aka Sister Abigail, in puppet form. So, pretty much how I would have her introduce every single one of these superstars are going to be like in some capacity in the Firefly Funhouse. They will play their own characters, their separate characters in the Firefly Funhouse, and will be another type of way um, in the ring. So, Liv Morgan would be pretty much the um the neighbor of bray wyatt he would she would serve as a neighbor so um i seen a couple of theories that maybe outside of the firefly funhouse is hell the firefly funhouse is bray is bray wyatt's personal hell and um i could believe that 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 seems pretty believable because we saw the vince puppet the vince mcmahon puppet the the devil vince mcmahon puppet he has horns and everything and he's supposed to represent the devil so it makes a lot of sense. So I will I will work off of that and say, um, especially with all uh, all of her cryptic tweets um, and pretty much her 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 saying like, oh she's uh, she's a prisoner, she's in agony, she's crying out for help and nobody's listening. Um, she might be in her own personal hell. So she could be a neighbor of Bray Wyatt. She can be living in her own sort of hell. Um, near the Firefly Funhouse. So she she would be the neighbor of Bray Wyatt and she would always come over to play. She would always play a happy character on the, every single one of these characters would play a happy character on the Firefly Funhouse. Exactly like Bray, they're all happy. They're all, you know, Pee Wee, Pee Wee, Pee -wee Playhouse, all that stuff. You know, that, that that's their whole thing. They're all happy or at least trying to act happy, you know? So she would be, very upbeat, very playful, always wanted to come over and play with Bray. However, she would be, when it comes to her in the ring, she would like, um, she would change her, her appearance. She would maybe come out with face paint or, you know, the same headdress that uh, Abby the Witch has and be completely a different person. She's not, she's no longer playful. She's just very 
focused and very mean. But the thing is, though, is that she is submissive to the fiend. She would be submissive to the fiend because the theory goes that it works too. Because in the in the in the, in the Halloween stories that Bray Wyatt had told years before the fiend was even introduced yet. Um, that was actually his first introduction in the, in the stories that he was telling. So um, he pretty much was saying that Sister Abigail was warning Bray Wyatt to stay away from the fiend because the fiend will take over. And now that he has taken over, so there's, 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 there's already an established relationship between Sister Abigail and the fiend, she she didn't like him. She wanted she wanted Bray to stay away because she knew he was a threat. Now that the the fiend is in control of Bray Wyatt, or maybe it's the other way around, because you know in the first episode he says that he's learned how to harness it, and the that is in the form of the fiend. So, but you know it's it's pretty much we already know that the, the fiend and the Bray Wyatt it's a symbiotic relationship it's kind of like any Brock and Venom in some kind of way I believe you know the fiend is, is definitely its own entity so um, I believe now that Bray Wyatt and the fiend are somewhat of one the, the fiend pretty much controls sister Abigail especially now that she's a puppet now that she's Abby the witch so she would definitely be very submissive to Bray and Bray would use her in different ways he would use her to to punish people um, um, and she would be the only female superstar in the new family thank you thank you for interrupting my video <laughs> yeah so the fiend pretty much commands Abby the witch now uh, and there's nothing she can do she has to listen she can't fight it she has to listen to the fiend because the fiend is almighty the fiend is powerful is all the power so she would have to listen and that's Liv Morgan I just wanted to you know briefly run through that because what else is there to be said everybody's already said what they had to say about uh, Liv Morgan being Abby the Witch so so the next superstar would definitely be like I said in the last video Bo Dallas Bo Dallas could be and this is exactly how I would have it go down so Bo Dallas is currently in a tag team with Curtis Axel, known as the B Team. So the B Team would pretty much be um, would be going on through their motions, you know, as usual, losing or winning by fluke. So um, I would have pretty much the B Team lose and go on a losing streak. They're trying to keep their hopes up. They're trying to trying to you know pray for a win some down somewhere down the line but um they're showing cracks in the team bo dallas is starting to question why am i even with curtis axel curtis axel you have shown over the years that all you are is a loser when i when he was in nxt when bo dallas was in nxt he was the man he was nxt champion he was running the place so um pretty much i would have bo dallas sh show cracks and question yo is it me or is it you i feel like it's you who's dragging me down Something like that. So in one of their matches, after one of their matches, after losing, Bo Dallas would, you know, they would have one of those moments where Bo Dallas is in the ring, you know, a little distant from Curtis Axel, Curtis Axel, Curtis Axel. And it would be Curtis Axel's fault why they lose the match. But, you know, they're looking at each other, you know, Curtis Axel's trying to look for forgiveness, but Bo Dallas is just looking at him like, I don't know, man, um, I'm not too sure about this. You know, they take their loss and then they walk away. And, when, and then in the next match, they lose again. And then Bo Dallas just stares at Curtis Axel. And then the lights go down. And when they come back up, the Fiend is in the ring. And the Fiend attacks Curtis Axel first. The Fiend will take Curtis Axel out. He will wipe him out like a rag doll. He would just throw him everywhere. He would just destroy the man. It would be pretty sad to watch, but... You know, that's the fiend. He's gruesome. He does what he does. So he'll take him out and then he'll turn his attention to Bo Dallas. And then he'll put the, the hurt glove up and then he'll put the heel glove up and he'll listen. He'll, he'll be conflicted as to what to do because they're real life brothers and everybody knows this. So, you know, Bo Dallas will be in the ring shaking in his boots, not knowing what to do. And the fiend is there, you know going crazy, trying to figure out which one he wants to listen to until finally he comes to the conclusion that he needs to listen to heel. 
and he puts, he locks the mandible claw in on Bo Dallas and with the heel glove. So he's choking him out and then the lights will go off. And when they come back up, they're both gone. Curtis Axel is still laid out, wiped out, maybe in the ring or on the side, you know, outside the ring, ring side or something. But they're, they're both gone now. It'll pretty much drag on like that for weeks. Everybody's questioning, where did Bo Dallas go? What has happened to Bo Dallas? The Fiend took him away. We haven't seen him since. Curtis Axel will be looking everywhere to try to, to try to apologize and to try to save his friend. But he cannot find him. There's no way to find this guy. Until Curtis Axel has to compete in a singles match. And he'll still lose. But... He'll fight in the match to where it, 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 it looks like he almost won. You know, he was really, he was really doing his thing. And he, he'll get a couple of roll-ups. They don't work. They're all near falls. He almost wins. But unfortunately, he loses. And then the lights go off. They turn back on. And then we'll see Bo Dallas in the ring. Bo Dallas will be wearing it's pretty much one of those Hawaiian shirts that... Uh, that Bray Wyatt used to wear when he was the cult leader, uh, when he was doing the cult leader gimmick. He'll be wearing one of those Hawaiian shirts. He'll be wearing um, pretty much the similar, similar to the hurt and heel gloves. He'll be wearing gloves like that, the kind of like the ones that he wore in NXT. And then he'll put them up. One will say mercy and the other will say cruelty. So one will say mercy and one will say cruelty. And he now grant mercy or cruelty because he embodies mercy the buzzard now so he'll listen to them and then he'll pretty much put the mercy one down and only listen to cruelty and he will take out curtis axel now he's done with him he's completely finished with him this is the, the this is the way of writing off the b team he's no longer in a tag team with him he only uh, he only operates under Bray Wyatt and the Fiend's rule. So next, after that, we'll see a, a Firefly Funhouse promo go up on the, on the Titan Tron as we usually do the theme song we'll play, you know. It'll be Bo Dallas in the Firefly Funhouse now. So Bray Wyatt will introduce him as, look, here is my brother. He is now going to be a co-host with me. He runs the show with me now. And he'll be wearing a blue sweater as opposed to Bray's red sweater, as I said in the last video. So now he is currently known as Bray Wyatt's official blood brother, and he runs the Firefly Funhouse with him. Now every segment will be both of them. So it, it, it'll, be, it'll be fun to see how he plays this character. Like I said, I feel like he should play the character like as he did in NXT. He should be the Bo Lee character, but instead of Bo leaving in, 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 in himself now, he believes in Bray Wyatt. Believe in The Fiend. He'll pretty much play that exact same NXT character with sinister undertones. He's happy in the Firefly Funhouse, but he can definitely get serious. He embodies Mercy the Buzzard now, so he is the one who can grant mercy or cruelty. And the thing with that is, is he can also be the one to decide for the Fiend. He decides whether the Fiend will save you, heal you, or he will hurt you. So he also works with the Fiend, and that, that's a great way, I believe, of putting Bo Dallas to some, you know, to some good use. So he's not just drifting on the roster for no reason because he's a pretty talented guy. He can, he's definitely great on the mic. His character work is amazing and he's still a good wrestler. So WWE put him to use. See, now this is the part of the video where I was actually going to um, implement Luke Harper. But since Luke Harper has been released, I've actually thought of something that could be even better. Um, it's a shame that the guy was released and that they had nothing for him. He was a, an amazing talent. They definitely could have used him for, for more and better things. But unfortunately, WWE creative is just, they just don't have the magic, man. They just think they, they don't have the, the minds to, to put these guys to good use, unfortunately. So the next, the next puppet and the next superstar, I would say, uh, I was going to put uh, Luke Harper. I was going to pair, pair Luke Harper with a rambling rabbit. But 
an even better option, especially because he's been split up with his own stable and he has a new look and everything, would be Eric Young. Now, Eric Young, Eric Young, we already know he's a talker. In, in, in the Sable Sanity, he was the talker. He was the guy who, who said everything for the group. Um, his promos would be a little, a little rambly. And that's exactly why I feel like he would be a great fit for Rambling Rabbit. Now, Rambling Rabbit, we, we've seen on the Firefly Funhouse, he is always subject to the, the worst torment. Um, and that's because he portrays one of the best sides of Bray Wyatt. Um, and he was the one who, who said, who spoke in, in, in mysteries and in, in different tongues and whatnot and all that riddle stuff, whatever, whatever. But he was still... A good talker even when he was even when he didn't even really know what he was talking about he was still a great talker I feel like you could play off the story that he's still not completely severed from the whole sanity thing he's still a little you know a little eh, iffy in the mind so what you could do is pretty much the same thing the fiend Bray Wyatt could go on a tirade where he pretty much selects who he wants to be a part of his group so he could just appear Kidnap them and disappear, and they'll, they won't see this superstar for days on end, for weeks on end. Nobody will know what happened to these guys and girls and where they've gone. But they always pop up right back in the Firefly Funhouse. You could do the same thing, kidnap Eric Young, and then he will be... He could play the role of the mailman in the Firefly Funhouse. So, like, you'll have Bray Wyatt opening up his door... Like he'll ha he'll he'll be trying to cut a promo in the Firefly Funhouse. He'll hear the the doorbell ring, open it up, and it's Eric Young in a mailman suit, and he's delivering the mail. Here's what I have for you, Bray. And, and the thing about this is that Rambling Rabbit, we all know he's a talker. He talks a lot. He does not shut up. So pretty much Eric Young can do the same thing when he delivers his mail. He talks about a whole lot of things. He'll go on tangents and he'll just talk too much. But Bray Wyatt's too nice to tell him that he talks too much. So he'll he'll always find subtle ways to get him out of the way. Like, you know, just let him down nice and easy, collect his mail, and let him go on his merry way. But there's always something sinister going on. So, you know, whatever way that the superstars themselves can 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 make these these, these ideas their own, hey, more power to you, that's what I'm doing. I'll give you the rough idea and you take the character and you work on it however you want. That's what I would do if I were a booker. So you'll just be the mailman, Eric Young. You'll talk too much, but when it comes to competing in the ring, he'll always come to the ring in a rabbit mask. Now, I, I would say the rabbit mask would be something like, you know, one of those masks that, that stop right here and it's just from, you know, the nose up. You have the little bunny ears and whatnot, and but you can still see his mouth. So every time he comes to the ring, he's talking. You can see that he's talking, but you can't hear. You can't really hear what he's saying. He's always talking. He's always rambling. So you won't even know what's going on in his head. You don't even know what he's saying, but he's definitely saying something. But pretty much, Eric Young would pose as the foot soldier. He goes out there and does the dirty work for all the members, for just collectively the Firefly family. He'll be the one that goes out there and, and competes in any match. He doesn't care who it is. He'll go out there and just wreck the house. So he'll pretty much serve as a foot soldier. That's all he really is. And not that that's a bad thing, because either way, he can still do great character work. Eric Young, rambling rabbit, moving on. And last but not least, we have Huskis the Pig Boy. Now, Huskis is a weird one because he embodies the gluttony of Bray Wyatt, of the former Bray Wyatt. He, he was he's supposed to be an homage to uh, Husky Harris, the character. That was a terrible character. You know, pretty much just to boil somebody down to their weight, awful. Awful. He was just supposed to be a pig guy. He was a pig guy. He was supposed to be a big guy. So they they were just calling him fat pretty much. So that's exactly what Husky Harris is supposed, was supposed to be. And that's exactly what Huskis the pig boy embodies. So you want a big guy? I'll give you a big guy. So another character that we can have 
is Lars Sullivan. And I know we haven't seen him in a while, and this is that's why it's perfect. We haven't seen him in a while. He can reinvent himself. He can still be the freak. We can all still know him as the freak, but in the Firefly Funhouse, he'll be known as the delivery boy. Now, he whatever he delivers, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what he delivers. It could be anything that Bray Wyatt see fits. He can use this to his advantage. He can deliver people. He can deliver news about who's been talking about him, who's been, who wants the feuds with him, who's, who wants the beef with him, pretty much. He can deliver pretty much anything. He can even be the milkman. No matter what it is, he's, he's just going to deliver things. But anytime we see him, he's always eating something. He's always eating candy, food, just pretty much anything because he's supposed to embody a glutton. And that's exactly what Lars can be. He can be the guy that's always eating when he delivers. So his mouth is always stuffed with something, but he's still talking. He'll, he'll still get his message across. He'll, he'll, but he'll still be a delivery man. He'll be a delivery boy. That's his purpose. But when he goes to the ring, he could wear a pig mask. A creepy zombie pigman mask or something like that. Something that references a pig. And... His gimmick will be is that he always wants to be fed another superstar. It doesn't matter who it is. He just wants to be fed. He wants to feast on the entire roster. And that's all he asks of Bray Wyatt. He'll listen to whatever Bray Wyatt wants him to do. Anything that he commands him to do, he'll carry it out as long as he's being fed. And that's the, that, that's the perfect purpose he can serve. Because there'd be no question. There'll be... No, nothing. He won't have to think about anything. All he has to think about is who his next slab of meat is, which is perfect. Because you have your big guy, you have your unstoppable monster, and it's already bad enough that you have the fiend that can't go down. You saw Seth Rollins; he had to use so many different methods to try to get this guy down in Hell in a Cell. It's scary enough. Now, with Lars on your team, the tall, big guy, the brawlic guy, forget about it, man. That's that, that. That's a complete family right there. You need your big guy. You need your foot soldier. You need your your creepy little guy that, that leads the rest, which would be Bo Dallas. He leads everybody else. Um, and you have and you have your Abby. You know now. Now that all those superstars are out the way, now that all the new guys are out the way, let's talk about Daniel Bryan. Now, my theory for Daniel Bryan is that the hair that, Br that Bray Wyatt ripped from him after he dragged him under the ring could be used. I don't, I don't know if that's his, his, his head hair or his facial hair. I personally believe that it could be his beard hair. And what that beard hair could go to is a brand new puppet, a goat puppet, a bearded goat puppet. Now, what the name of the puppet could be, I don't know. Maybe you can name him Drago, the Drago the goat. I don't know, something like that. Maybe paying homage to uh, referencing the American dragon gimmick that, you know, that's, that's exactly what Bray, that's exactly what Daniel Bryan was known as before. He was known as the American Dragon. So you can make him a puppet that's delusional. He thinks he's a dragon, but he's actually just a goat. And he, he's always looking to prove himself in some kind of way. And that's exactly what he could be. He can embody the... The, the one he, he just he's feisty he always wants to ram his head against the next opponent or something um now i've seen a lot of theories that maybe that uh the hurt in the heel glove the hurt glove can inject a little bit of the fiend and every single superstar that he locks it onto and you can see most of the superstar that that had the active superstars at least that that have had the hurt glove locked onto them has turned heel or has shown some kind of malicious side or something which makes a lot of sense they've had a little bit of the fiend implanted in them so it makes a lot of sense and i could go i could roll with that so if not that he's embodying a new a brand new puppet he could be the fiend himself because we've seen bray wyatt outside of the Firefly Funhouse as Funhouse Bray for the first time. 
before we have never seen before the the thing with the Miz, we have never seen Funhouse Bray outside of the Firefly Funhouse, but we saw that for the first time. So maybe it could lead to Daniel Bryan. We we we've heard in his promos that I'm unstable too when he was talking to the Miz. I'm unstable too. I'm this and that. So like he can use that tweaked mental uh, to break after he's had the fiend, a little bit of the fiend ejected to him, and maybe he is now the fiend in some kind of capacity. So maybe he could come out with his own version of the fiend mask or something like that. And now Bray is free to wrestle as Funhouse Bray. So, and maybe down the line it'll lead to the fiend versus Bray Wyatt. So there's, there's that. But if I had it my way, I would have it him be another puppet, somebody who follows Bray Wyatt, because Bray Wyatt, cult leader. That's exactly what he's supposed to be, a cult leader. So, and that's pretty much just gonna, that's gonna wrap up the, the theory for now. Um, maybe down the line when things get fleshed out, we could revisit this and do some tweaks and modifications and whatnot. I'm trying to get this channel up, man, because um, I really love wrestling and I'm trying to make sure that we get uh, me and my friends that run this channel we could get uh, a lot more eyes on this and um, maybe we could, hey, you never know, maybe I could be the one helping booking for WWE, something like that, I don't know, something like that, but thank you guys for watching, share, like, subscribe, all that, and I'll see you next time. Um, I'm thinking maybe starting reviews, I don't know, maybe I'll review SmackDown Raw, NXT, AEW, all that stuff, but, you know, thanks for joining, see you guys next time.